Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be the Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it's going to be an updated World Chalice deck profile for March 6th, 2018. Now, I've been doing a lot of testing with this deck since the YCS Bokum success rate of it winning the event, uh, despite how strange the list was and how weirdly it looked like it operated when I was testing it. Uh, basically, I fine-tuned things down, and I feel like I have a list that I really enjoy, and is a really good uh, starting point, in my opinion, for those of you who are looking for a more up-to-date list to mess around with. So, basically, that is what I'm going to be showing you today. Now, I've been doing a lot of testing online and in, like, actual, like, local tournaments and stuff like that with this. Uh, and it's been giving me, you know, it's been giving me good ideas and also been uh, has been uh, giving me, like, good feedback on the choices that I've been making in the deck. So, without further ado, the deck list is 40 cards, and it starts with 3 Lee, the World Chalice Fairy. This is obviously a 3 of you play. Uh, 3 World Legacy World Chalice. Very clearly, like, the best cards in the deck. Uh, only one copy of World Chalice Guard Dragon. You don't require multiples of this card anymore. Its hand trap effect is almost never relevant. Uh, and you never want to be, like, bricking on multiples of these. You just want the one to resolve turn one, and that's pretty much it. Uh, especially now that we have Monster Reborn in the game. Uh, and so, yeah, it's like, it's basically, if it was a vanilla monster, it'd be better. Uh, but I'm playing two Chosen by the World Chalice as my vanillas. Uh, strictly because Itelli makes this card, like, better than, uh, than Beckend. Like, I understand the whole Beckend play, like, Beckend, uh, lets you go into, like, Baguska, but Baguska is a very underwhelming card, honestly. Like, you basically just make the card if your hand sucks, uh, and playing cards like that that are only good when you're in, like, losing positions is not something that I'm a huge fan of, uh, overall. But then, uh, one Gym Knight Garnet as another vanilla to go along with that. So it's only world, like nine World Chalice Monsters and then the one Gym Knight Garnet that can be kind of a, a pseudo World Chalice Monster if you draw it, but honestly you really just want to put it in, back into your deck for a Brilliant Fusion off of a Saryuja or linking away with it uh, and then making an Exodius drop happen. But continuing onward, three copies of the Agent of Creation Venus and three copies of the Mystical Shine Ball. These are obviously standard at this point. Uh, I don't even see people arguing not using them anymore of like, why are you playing Venus when you could be playing a World Chalice focused build? I don't even see people trying to argue that point anymore. Uh, the cards are good. Cards are one card skull dreads. You basically have to play them. Uh, and then I'm still playing two copies of Exodius. Uh, I feel like three is too much and I feel like one is probably not enough, although I would play one. I definitely wouldn't play a hard zero. Um, like some people are advocating for. This card opens up way too many combo possibilities, as well as letting you go into like three, four, so you just turn one, depending on what your hand situation is. Like, uh, when I was testing three Sir Yujas, I made five Sir Yujas turn one in an actual tournament setting. Uh, but like this card is actually just like fantastic because like you just need a hard recovery option and that is this card. Uh, definitely would not play zero of it. Like I said, somewhere around one to two is probably the perfect number. Three is probably too much because you do end up seeing it way too often, which is definitely not what you need to be doing. Uh, but I digress. Now, the only hand traps that I'm running uh, that aren't uh, Eva targets are two copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. These could be two copies of Ash Blossom, but I'm trying to run a very like small hand trap lineup in this deck because this deck naturally just sucks going second. Uh, if you're, if we're being completely honest, like, you have to dedicate so much of your deck into, like, bricky things, like hand traps and kaijus, if you're trying to mitigate going second, uh, like, game one. You might as well just, like, put your faith in the die roll and at least, like, play a couple of hand traps that are at least good, like, because, like, this can be gotten off E-Telly, so it turns E-Telly into, like, a disruptive card, uh, if, like, you can set E-Telly turn one and still have, like, your entire combo. Uh, there's a bunch of different other things that go into it. Uh, but basically, like, Ghost Ogre is kind of my favorite hand trap right now because I play and build my decks to play against the best deck in the format, which is Pendulum. Uh, and this also does have niche applications in other matchups as well, but Ash is sort of superior to this, but this can be gotten off E-Telly. It's also a light target for Brilliant Fusion, although that rarely matters. Uh, there's just a few things that, like, go into me playing this, but it's mainly because, you know, hitting Electromite with it is super valuable, usually, uh, and the fact that you can get it off E-Telly. Uh, but that's the only hand traps that I'm playing that aren't part of the uh, Eva package, which I am playing the two Herald and the one Eva. Uh, I've been testing this for a long time, ever since Bokum, because I did make that video that said this card was terrible. And in the context of that video, I was correct. Uh, it was a previous format. The deck didn't play Transmodifies. We had Gofu. We had Dandelion. We had a lot of different ways to combo. Uh, we were trying to do different things with our Brilliant Fusions. We weren't really trying to mess with Eva that much. In the context of that format, Eva was terrible. And the thing is, it's not even strictly amazing right now in my testing. I found I don't really like, I'm not really a huge fan of this card. I'm more a fan of this card now, specifically enough, because of the fact that like, um, like being, disc like discarding Eva with Orange Light is huge. Like, 
having those disruptions that aren't on field that you are searching during your turn is actually a lot more valuable in this format than it was previously. Uh, spirals could usually get around an orange light, but Pendulum Magicians really struggle against this card, and that's actually pretty key. The format kind of transitioned into making this card not strictly terrible, uh, but I wouldn't call it amazing either. It's just, you know, purely acceptable. Uh, it's an acceptable card to be running. Uh, and, like, the fact is, like, this, like, if I wasn't running these, I would probably be running something like the Cyframe Gamma engine, which is almost identical in some sort of essence of, like, you have a brick you could draw and you're playing actual hand traps. And, like, the reason I would play, like, the Gamma package is so I could, like, side deck Epsilons and, like, the Trickstar matchup or whatever. But you can do that with this card, too. Like, you can just side Purple Lights for, like, Tricksters in the shitty, like, stun decks. Uh, so it's very interesting. It allows the deck to actually do a lot of weird things. Uh, but, like... The main value this card has is actually just like getting this card against Pendulums specifically. Uh, other matchups don't really care too much about this, uh, but like it's it's really weird. Like I said, it's not strictly terrible like it once was, uh, but it's not amazing either. It's purely acceptable. Like you can you can play the card whether you want to or not, and it's probably not going to mess with your performance that much. It does make Brilliant Fusion like kind of a broken plus two um, in certain regards. But sometimes it is also kind of bricky. It's weird. It's a very weird card. I'm not sure of my complete stance on this card. Like I said, it's acceptable and it's still in my deck for a reason. Uh, I found that its pros have finally started outweighing its cons. Because the deck plays Triple Trans Modify now, the deck is very much Venus Turbo. We don't have the other options. And this card just happens to be very well situated against the best deck in the format. Whereas previously, Herald of the Orange Light was not really that amazing against Spirals. It was kind of decent. Uh, but, like, it was one of those things that they could play through. Pendulum Magicians, if you hit, like, their Electromite with it, like, Jesus Christ, do they struggle. Uh, but anyway, other two cards in the main deck are two Kaijus, one Gamma Seal, and one Radiant. Uh, this is, you know, this is just to try and mitigate the True Draco matchup a bit. Uh, also, it's, like, decent enough going second. You can just drop this over a Vortex or whatever. Um, and then, like, uh, just, like, do your play and not to worry about the, 39, uh, the number 38 because, like, uh... Your deck doesn't really focus that heavily on spells and before you can out the 38. Uh, it's interesting, uh, but Gamma Seal is obviously the meat of the package. Like, you're trying to get to Gamma Seal to, uh, to put a lot of negates on board and then, you know, do things with Firewall to recur your Eva and stuff like that. So, that was 25 monsters for the spells. Two copies of Kyoto Waterfront. We don't need to play really any more than these, I don't think. Uh, I think two is a proper number, specifically because of how often you're going into Skull Dread and doing Ningirsu draws on your turn one. It's not like the old days where we were just drawing three off Ningirsu, uh, and that was like our only time we were drawing cards in our turn. Uh, we're drawing like two to three off Ningirsu, and then we're drawing at least twice off Skull Dread every single turn one. Uh, so it's a very interesting, it's like very easy to dig for this card now. Uh, but carrying on... Three copies of Brilliant Fusion and one copy of Foolish. You should not be replacing any of these cards for anything because, like, uh, this gets your Venus in Grave, your Lee in Grave, can send your Eva, depending on the situation. Same thing with Foolish. Like, Foolish can be an extender. Uh, fun thing with Foolish is that you can often, you know, use it to, if you draw it off an Ingearsu or a Skull Dread play, you can use it to send Exodius to your grave and then, like, have a co linked uh, firewall that's co linked for two. And you can add back, like, Eva. And Exodius, uh, because that's the one rule that I had to set for myself with this deck is to never drop Exodius when Eva was in grave, because the only play I liked with Eva and the only play I still like with Eva is the fact that you can discard it off Herald, so you want to be adding it back with Firewall. Uh, so like I've made that hard rule set for myself, to, and like the cards now don't conflict with each other nearly as much. Uh, but still, like being able to foolish Exodius and kind of search it with Firewall Dragon is nice, if I do say so myself. Uh, but then carrying on three copies of Transmodify, you can get away with this now because of the Herald of the Orange Lights. Uh, it may even be a justification to bump Herald of the Orange Light to three, just because it is a level two fairy. Uh, the deck is very much Venus or Bust now. You kind of have to you play you have to play Venus and do whatever you can. Uh, there's not really any cards that facilitate a turn one play quite like Venus does, specifically for this deck as well. It just hits like all the proper parameters of being a light fairy, summoning light fairies. Those light fairies happy to happen to be vanillas, which make M duck, which happens to facilitate more of your plays. Like it just happens to be like I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't like design the entire world chalice like deck and strategy around Venus. Like I wouldn't be surprised in any stretch of the imagination. But this is definitely like an auto three of Ash is kind of down in popularity in terms of the better players lists because it doesn't do a lot to pendulums, and that's what the build they're like that's the deck they're trying to beat. Um, when they build their decks, so three trans modify. You wanna you wanna have consistency in getting into your engine, uh, but 
or rather the most broken card in your engine. My uh, my sinuses are really clogged up right now, so if I'm taking too long of pauses, you know why. It's because I'm trying to take a deep breath and clear my stuff. Uh, but one copy of Upstart for Consistency, Soul Charge, Reborn, and Emergency Teleport are the other one ofs. Uh, I feel like this card is strictly better than Unexpected Die, specifically with uh, Ghost Ogres in this deck as well. You can set it turn one if you don't need an extension combo piece, and you can E-Tally on your opponent's turn. That actually works very well with Waterfront as well, because then you have a Ghost Ogre on the field that contribute itself to, like, destroy a card on the field. So that's two counters, and then this being flipped and going to Grave would be a third counter. So, like, just by setting E-Tally when your board is a Waterfront Gamma Seal, and, like, you're getting Ghost Ogre out of your deck... Uh, adds three counters to Waterfront, so that's huge. That is so big. You can just Gamma Seal and negate a card, put Waterfront down to three counters, maybe to get another card, put it down to one, flip e Telly, summon the Ghost Ogre immediately, now that Waterfront's back at two counters, and then if the Ghost Ogre negates anything, that's two more counters, so that like just generates multiple extra negates for your Gamma Seal, which is actually kind of huge. Uh, but that's all for the spells. For the traps, I'm still playing two copies of Phantom Knights of Shade, Brick, and Dying. This card is actually amazing. Actually, low-key, kind of want to play three of it. I would probably be playing three of it if I was playing uh, Beckoned, because, like, that would be just amazing. Like, when your hands are shit, you'd be able to flip it, special it as a four, normal summon Beckoned, and make, like, something like Baguska. Or, like, in sided matchups, you could make, like, Dweller or something against True Draco or the 60-card deck. Uh, like, this card's actually fantastic. It does not break at multiples. Like I said, I'm con heavily considering three. The only reason I'm not heavily considering three is because e Telly is essentially kind of the third. Uh, but even then, probably could potentially be convinced to cut Upstart for the third copy of this, or maybe, like, cutting a Radian for the third copy of this. This card's actually amazing in multiples. Because, like, you can't activate more than one in a turn, obviously. But, like, the fact that it just exists and you put back duplicates off Skull Dread, it just makes things fantastic for you. But, for the extra deck, triple copies of Imduk, it's very standard. Uh, the only thing that's not quite standard is two copies of Link Spider. I just find myself requiring this a little bit. Um, simply because, like, sometimes, like, you'll use all your Imduks and you need to make just a random Link one that has a different name from, uh, from like, a Shine Ball or something for another Saryuja play to happen. Sometimes it comes up, but you could probably cut it for something else like a Borload. I personally am not a huge fan of Borload in this particular deck, but regardless, for Link 2's uh, Proxy Dragon, two copies of Eeb, and then one copy of Orum. Orum doesn't really get made that much anymore. <laughs> the deck is just very much Salmon Skull Dread. Um, it's very weird. Uh, one copy of Trigate Wizard. This also doesn't come up that much anymore unless you're doing like one of the Broken Soul Charge plays, which, hey, funnily enough, drawing 11 cards minimum every turn and putting the six worst ones back typically lets you get the Soul Charge. Weird, eh? Uh, but then one copy of Ningirsu, one copy of Firewall Dragon, and then uh, two copies of Suryu just Gold Dread. Uh, you could actually cut one of the Link Spiders for a third copy of this. I was playing three of them at one point throughout the weekend and making all three of them turn one and sometimes making them more than once, making like two Saryujas, drawing into an Exodius, putting a Venus back on the field, uh, dropping Exodius, putting two Saryujas back into my extra deck, and then making at least one more, going up to like four Saryujas a turn. Um, sometimes as many as five. Uh, it's actually kind of crazy the nonsense you can do with this card. This card is legitimately a Pokemon card. I have no idea why they printed this card in Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, if these look suspiciously like proxies to you, that's because they are. It's because I copy... I, uh, I copy. I borrow <laughs> Saryuja from people that I know at every event and local that I play until I have the funds to acquire my own or if I just stop being lazy and go buy my own. But... Gym Knight, Seraph Knight is the last card in the extra deck for obvious reasons. Brilliant Fusion's kind of a broken card. You kind of want to be playing that. Uh, but anyway, that's basically the list that I've been messing around with as of right now. This is the list that I've made that has the most refinements uh, to it compared to the list that I've been testing in the previous week on streams and stuff like that. I'm actually a really big fan of this list. I really like how it plays. Its hands are very consistent. Uh, the hand trap lineup is very low. And two of those hand traps are searchable off the off the Eva, which has more versatility and like uh, an actual more favor now because the deck is just more focused on Venus than it was previously. So this card could probably evolve. Like the the, the conditions for this card actually just became like perfect for it to be good. Uh, it's very interesting um, for it to be like actually like just decent for the deck. It's still not a mandatory inclusion, but I could probably see it becoming more of a mandatory inclusion. As we get closer to things like the Troy Mare Link Monsters, especially since we lost Dandelion, we don't really have any good discard uh, like we used to have. Like, we used to have Dandelion, and we could just discard that for a Troy Mare Monster, get two tokens, and that was fantastic. 
Uh, but now, like, with Troy Mares, you could, like, actually just have this in your hand. You could probably play multiples of this, actually, and discard it for a Troy Mare monster. Get two more monsters in your hand that could at least be discard fodder for the other Troy Mare Link monster effects. So, things to consider. This card actually has a lot of good testing opportunities going into the future. Because of how, like, linearized the Pendulum deck has become and how linearized the other decks of the formats have become because of the fact that they're all just trying to counter Pendulum. It's very interesting. Like I said, it seems like it's almost a perfect storm of that card being good for for reasons other than what they were like previous formats. But uh, the fact that like you're just running very very small numbers of hand traps in this deck uh, means that you're basically more reliant on the die roll. But this deck sucked at going second anyway, like I previously stated. Uh, so like your deck is more consistent when you're going first rather than just like winning the die roll, going first and opening like four hand traps and being like, what do I do now, mom? <laughs> but anyway. Let me know your thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, and all that sort of stuff in the comments down below. As always, as I may have already said, all that sort of nonsense. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. And so now the video is over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else that's supporting the lower tiers. You guys are forever awesome for the support that you give, you help make things on this channel possible, and I cannot express the amount of appreciation I have for you guys. You guys are awesome, thank you so much for the support.